Well, hello, YouTubers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And welcome to an episode of This Old Telescope. Yes, unfortunately, Master Carpenter Norm couldn't be here. So today, I will be your host as we initiate a series of videos rebuilding this very home-built, interesting design telescope into something that will be worthy of being raffled off by the St. Petersburg Astronomy Club at their next annual star party to raise money for the club. I'm going to turn this, well, not very desirable telescope into something that everyone will want and will be willing to plunk down some money to buy raffle tickets for. So that's what I'm going to do over this series of videos. I'm not sure how many videos it's going to take. This thing needs a lot of work. So right now I have it leaning on this uh, sawhorse right here because it's very out of balance. The mirror, the primary mirror and secondary mirror as well, have been removed and sent off for recoating. Um, they were tested and found to be good mirrors, but they needed recoating. The coatings on them were pretty much shot. So they've come back from recoating and they're just as beautiful as can be. Um, I'm not going to unbox them at the moment. Um, I'm just going to leave them in the box uh, out of harm's way while I do the rest of the work that this telescope needs. And then later on, um, I'll put the mirrors in and we can get the balance right. But for now, I'm just going to leave them boxed up where they can't get hurt. So I'll give you a little bit of a walk around on this telescope and we'll start disassembling it. And uh, look at what's going on with this thing. Obviously, very home built. Not that that's bad, but you know, it's an older, older way of doing things that uh, modern sensibilities and uh, best practices have changed a little bit since then. So here's a look down the business end of the scope. It is octagonal in shape and made out of uh, pieces of half inch plywood. So as a result, this telescope tube is monstrously heavy. Oh my goodness, is it heavy. It's also very long. It's right about five feet long. So this is about, this is a 12 and a half inch telescope, so it's right about at F5-ish. And um, it's got an okay focuser on it. It's a Tektron. It's an older model, but it works pretty smooth. We may or may not upgrade the focuser. Depends on the budget. I need to talk to the board of directors about the budget on this. Um, it comes with a uh, Telrad, which is nice. We don't have to get one of those. However, look at the chunk of lumber the Telrad is mounted on. I mean, that's got to add a couple of pounds to the weight right there. And then over here, there's a homemade wooden dovetail. Another big chunk of lumber, which I assume had a finder scope on it. So, I mean, these two mounts alone have to add a few pounds to the top of the top of the telescope. I'm thinking there must have been a balance issue and they needed some weight up at the top. Okay. Um, let's see. The spider is adequate. The secondary mirror holder is adequate. We don't have to do anything with those. Um, the altitude bearings. Uh, by today's standards, they are very, very wimpy in diameter. Um, they need to be much bigger in diameter to provide the right level of stiction that you need to overcome slight imbalances in the telescope so it doesn't either stand straight up or nod down towards the ground as you change out eyepieces. So it's going to need bigger altitude bearings. The, so this end of the telescope... Well, the primary mirror would be up inside there. As you can see, it's held on with these four, like, luggage clamp things. Um, this does not really fit worth a darn. It kind of floats around. So the mirror wouldn't be, uh, you know, secured in there as well as it ought to be. Plus, these clamps hang out and snag on everything when you're trying to move the telescope around. They have to go. We need to find another way to mount the back plate on the telescope that doesn't involve those clamps. Okay. Also, there is no ventilation down here. There is no way to ventilate the back of the telescope and let the heat of the mirror escape. So there need to be ventilation holes. So that's something else that needs to change. Okay. So let me, um, let me take this off and we'll take a look at what's inside. Okay, I got the, uh, the back plate off. It was actually 
a little more difficult than I thought. One of the clamps did not want to come loose, even after I got the other three off. Let's go take a look and see what we've got here. So what we have here is a very primitive excuse for a mirror cell. Uh, I am told, I didn't see it myself, but I am told by the folks who received this telescope and took the mirror out for recoding, that the mirror was simply glued down to this top wooden plate with three big circles of silicone glue. And I can still see the remains of where those circles were. Again, best practices have changed over the years. It is not recommended that you, that you glue down your telescope mirror anymore because, you know, this is wood, and this is going to expand and contract at one rate. The silicone glue is going to expand and contract at another rate. And your mirror, which is sitting up here, is going to expand and contract at a third rate. And they're all going to be pushing, pulling, twisting on each other. And what it's going to cause is your mirror to be pulled a little bit out of the ideal shape. Glass is flexible, believe it or not. And you won't get the best images that you can. So we need a better mirror cell. Also, there is no ventilation, like I said before. There is no way for air to move through here and carry the heat away from the telescope mirror in a timely manner. It's going to stay hot down there in the tube for a long time. There's going to be waves of heat coming up off of it interfering with your images. So, yeah, we need a proper mirror cell and we need some ventilation. Now, I could convert this into a proper mirror cell. It'd take a little work. It'd be less than ideal, but it would be workable. Um, or we could buy one. It's going to depend on the budget again. I'll talk to the board of directors about my budget and see if we can afford a mirror cell. Otherwise, I'll have to modify this. I mean, it's the beginnings of a mirror cell. It's just got a long way to go. Now, as for the tube, well, it is just way too long and insanely heavy. Solid wood tubes are heavy. Nobody makes solid wood telescope tubes anymore. Um, you know, every year we raffle off a telescope. And usually it's one that we've rebuilt. And our goal when we rebuild a telescope is for some little old lady who might win it to be able to move it and transport it. Okay, and this, there's no way. I mean, I am a grown man, reasonably strong, and this thing is an effort to muscle around. And you need a truck or a very large SUV or van to transport this thing because the, the tube is just so long. So, um, you know, there's no way a little old lady in a compact car is going to be able to transport this, move it around, set it up, take it down. There is no way. So this needs to be radically, and I mean radically, modified to uh, make that happen. So how are we going to do it? without just throwing it away and starting over, because I don't have time for that. I've got less than a year to get this done, and I've got a lot of other stuff to do this year. So, how am I going to do it? Well, I'm thinking a Surrey truss design would probably be the best option. I'm thinking just take this tube and slice it right about here, and slice it back here somewhere, and cut this middle section out, and replace it with some lightweight aluminum truss tubes to hold the two sections in proper alignment with each other. It would be, you'd be able to knock it down fairly quickly, transport all the pieces in a fairly small space, and then put it together fairly easy. And no one piece would be very heavy. So, yeah, that's an idea. Plus, taking all this middle weight out of the tube will move the balance point way far back so that I can cut down the rocker box here, cut it down lower, put in the larger bearings that it needs for uh, better stiction, and make the rocker box, that'll make the rocker box smaller and heavier and easier to transport too. I'll get rid of these heavy chunks of wood up on top here. They're not needed, you know. Certainly they're not going to be needed for counterbalancing anymore, if that's what they were there for anyway. Um, in fact, I might even blow holes in this upper section to further lighten it. So that's a possibility too. 
in the back. Well, I'll get rid of all these clamps. They are just not reliable. They don't hold the mirror into position repeatedly and solidly. So we'll get rid of those. And what I'll probably do is put some bosses on the inside that we can run screws through, probably three or four screws, to hold the back plate on. And it'll come off easy. On the rare occasions, you actually need to access the mirror because you won't really have to access the mirror very often. Um, with the tube much shorter, you'll be able to reach down the tube to get to the mirror, like if you need to flick some dust off of it or something carefully with a paintbrush. You know, you won't have to take the back off very often. Maybe once every few years to clean the mirror. That would be about it. Put some vent holes in this, and that will further lighten it. So yeah, that's my plan for this telescope. Going to cut it up into pieces, put it back together as a truss tube design, get rid of all the dead weight that it doesn't need, cut down the rocker box. Oh, and by the way, the rocker box itself is sitting on four legs, which is a no-no, because... Any, any item only sits on, the, on three points. It doesn't sit on four. So if you have four points, it just give it the opportunity to rock. So I will rework the, the ground plate of the rocker box here so that it sits on three legs. Probably um, hockey pucks. They are my go-to um, base for telescopes. They absorb vibration, and they don't mar whatever surface you set them on. So we'll go with hockey pucks probably. And I may uh, rework the ground plate to be round instead of square, so, you know, you don't trip over it when you're walking around the telescope. Now, the telescope is not without, you know, some nice features. It did come with a Telrad. It's got a halfway decent focuser on it. Um, the spider's nice. You know, the secondary mirror holder's nice. And, and this was obviously equipped with a uh, Sky Commander at some point. It has the mounting points for the Sky Commander here on the altitude bearings and down inside the rocker box here, the mounting point for the azimuth bearing. So this was set up to have a Sky Commander on it at one point. Also, you can see it better on this side. These holes have been drilled and there are T-nuts on the inside for wheelbarrow arms with wheels on them for moving the scope around, because this is a very heavy scope. I could see how somebody needed to move it around with wheelbarrow-like, with long arms and wheels. Now on this side, though, it looks like they got the placement of the holes wrong the first time, and then got it right the second time, and then did it right on the, on the other side the first time. So I'll have to think about whether I want to try to fill those holes in or not. And I might cut um, a few lightning holes in the uh, base too. Maybe even get a little artistic about it. We've got some people in the club who are pretty artistic with this sort of stuff and uh, we might uh, we might get a little artistic with that. That there's a lot of a lot of blank wood there that's just dead weight so we could cut some holes in it and uh, lighten up the base a lot and maybe get like I said get a little artistic about it. So that's my plans in a nutshell. So I think in the next video, we'll start actually working on it. We'll start taking this beast to pieces and uh, rebuilding it. So subscribe to see future This Old Telescope videos and all the other sorts of videos I do. The gold recovery, the travel, the astronomy, the whatever. So subscribe. I'll press that little bell icon YouTube wants you to press to be notified when a new video comes out. As a subscriber, you'll be notified when I release a new video. If you're interested in seeing when the next video on this comes out, subscribe and press that button. You'll be notified. And if you found this video at all interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and check out my second channel, ElectroGeek64. If you're at all interested in electronics or retro computing, you need to check that out. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.